Two episodes ago, we did our first format string exploit. And in the last video, we had a look at how dynamically linking libraries to binaries work. Basically, how can a program call functions from libc. And we also had an idea how to abuse this when we want to redirect code execution. In this video, we will use this technique to exploit format level 4 from exploit exercises protostar. First, let's have a look at the code. The main function calls Vaughn. Vaughn reads up to 512 characters from standard input into the buffer and then uses printf to print the buffer. We also see immediately that the buffer is placed as the first parameter of printf and that is the format parameter. After the printf, there's a call to exit. This means that this function Vaughn will never return it will perform the syscall exit to the kernel, which will quit this process. So if we would overwrite the return pointer of this function, we would never return and we could not exploit this. So we use the technique from the last video where we overwrite the global offset table entry for exit with the address for hello. Then instead of exit, we execute hello at the end. Let's get everything ready. I use again VMware to run the protostar image and connect to it via SSH with PuTTY. Open one window for the binary and another video where we can write the exploit. We also might want to import the struct module right away because we need that to convert integers to binary strings. Let's start by first verifying that we have a format string vulnerability. We can just specify some format characters and see if they are turned into numbers. Yep. It works. So to make this exploit work, we have to figure out a few addresses. Let's get the addresses of the hello function with examine hello. Here it is. Let's copy that into our exploit script. We can do that easily by simply highlighting the area you want to copy and then perform a mouse right click into the other window. Next, let's try to find the global offset table where we want to write this hello address to. Disassemble main. Okay, uh, right, I forgot, we call Vaughn, so disassemble Vaughn. And at the bottom you can see the call to exit at the procedure linkage table PLTL thing. Disassemble that address and we can now see the address that is referenced in the first instruction with the jump. That tries to reference the address of exit from glibc from that location. So examine that address and yep, that's the global offset table. Now. We also store the table address in our script. And let's set two breakpoints in Vaughn, one before the printf and one after the printf. Next, let's simulate by hand overriding the GOT entry. Run, we enter some random stuff, first breakpoint. Now we are before the printf. Now let's override the GOT entry. Uh, let's check GOT again. Now write set and in curly braces int the address we want to write to, and then the value we want to write. And now the entry for exit in the GOT has changed. Continue once, now we are after the printf. Just one instruction away from the call to exit. Let's continue and see if we execute exit or hello. Whoop! Okay, we executed hello, that worked. Now we just have to achieve this write with a format string and percentage n. Okay, step one. Let's exit the debugger and let's find the string we enter on the stack by playing around with the format specifier. We use our script to do those tests. So first we know the buffer is 512 bytes long. So let's write a function that pads our string uh, to that length. So we simply append a certain number of characters to our string where that number is 512 minus the length of the current string. Then we create a variable exploit and print that variable padded. And when we execute it, uh, we can see our exploit string and that it's padded to those 512 characters. So this should print the first four values from the stack if we pipe it into the input of the format 4 binary. Yep, seems to work. Now let's prepend some recognizable characters to the string and then try to see how far away our string is on the stack. Okay, our string already starts with the fourth value. Now we can use the number dollar notation in the format string to specifically reference that offset. So $4 after the percentage sign. 
that would attempt to reference the fourth parameter of printf instead of going through the parameters one after another. So now all values are for one for one for one for one. I hope you remember that percentage %n can be used to write the number of printed characters to an address on the stack. So we could replace our characters with the address of the global offset table address to write to that value. Let's try it. We use struct to convert the integer address to a binary string, struct pack i exit plt. Uh, let's replace the percentage %x with percentage %n and see what, does, what it does in GDB. But first write the output of the script to a file so we can use it in GDB as input. Don't forget to set the breakpoints again, run and pipe in the exploit string. We hit the breakpoint. So now we are about to execute the printf. Let's check the global offset table entry. Now let's execute the printf and let's check again. Ha! We have overwritten GOT with a fairly small number. If we now continue, we will sec fault in exit because at this address is no function. So percentage %n has successfully written the number of characters printed into the global offset table. Now all we gotta do is print enough characters so that we reach the number that is the address of hello. Hmm, hex 80484b4. Damn, that's a big number. We have to print like over 134 million characters. Each character is a byte, so we have to print like 128 megabytes of text. Will that work? Well, first of all, we only have space for 512 characters in the buffer. So we can't simply write them all, but we can abuse printf format string again to pad an output string to any size, which allow us to write many more characters. Let's try it. Let's also change the number of n's down to only one. Ah, in fact, let's change it back to x so we don't smash the table all the time and we can make sure we always hit the address. So let's pad this to like 30 characters to see if that works. Run it against the format for binary and yes, see all those spaces? Text got padded to 30 characters. Now let's try that with 134 million. Oh, and we must not forget to add another percentage %n. Okay, it does something. It seems to work. It's printing and printing and printing. All those millions of, of spaces. This takes ages. Printing those 100 megabytes is just crazy. Ah, done. Let's see if something changed. But it did change the global offset table pretty close to hello. You just would have to fiddle around a bit and adjust it just exactly. But you know what? This sucks to print so many characters. Let's use a little trick. Let's use two shorter writes to achieve the same. The idea is that we could first write the lower two bytes with a much smaller value and then perform another write at address plus two to write another small value to the higher bytes, thus constructing the whole four byte through two writes. So let's try to write the lower two bytes first. Let's start with a padding with 30. Write the output again into the file and run GDB with it as input. Okay, so with the padding of 30, we are able to write hex 2e, which is 46. Our goal is to write the two lower bytes, so we want 84b4, which is 33,972. Because we had a padding of 30, but we ended up with 46, we have to compensate for those 16 characters. So we subtract 16 from it. Uh, so we want to put 33,956 into it as padding. And when we run it, it's fast, and look at the GOT entry, we can confirm that the two lower bytes are now 84b4. Now, to address the two higher bytes, we move our address by two forward and perform another write. So let's add this entry as well. So exit plus two. This means that for the second write, we want to address the fifth element on the stack. And now we just have to figure out how many we need to write here. Let's try with 30 again. Okay, the lower bytes now stay 84b4, perfect. And the higher bytes are 84d2. 
but we want to get only 804. So how do we get a lower number if we can only increase the amount of characters? Well, in reality, we don't only write two bytes, we always write four bytes. This means also that currently we screw up data that is stored behind our exit GOT entry. Now guess what happens if we write enough to increase the number such that the third byte is one. It doesn't matter for the GOT because it will only see the other four bytes. So basically we overflow those two upper bytes so we can get there a low value. Now currently we have 84D2 and we want 804. I mean we actually want 10804. And if you subtract now the 84D2 from this, we know how much we should write to get to 10804. So 8332. But that's hex. So that's 33,586 characters. And it already includes the 30 padding, so we must not forget that. Now we might be done. Let's check. Let's modify that. And then we write the output file, we run GDB, we break before the printf. This is how the table entry looks before. Now continue and examine the address again. Whoop! We changed it. And that's the address of hello. So now continue and let the program run. And boom! Code execution redirected. We win. It's crazy how a harmless looking function like printf can be used to control the instruction pointer.